So um, I know it's been a long time since we got together. Um, and uh, in that time, things have occurred, and uh, I'm aware of that. Um, so I'm not gonna pretend like that's not true. Um, um, yesterday, uh, when I was talking to a couple friends of mine, uh, similar to you guys, um, we were like having this conversation, and the conversation was, I'm gonna try to condense it and, and paraphrase it. And the conversation was like this, I was like, hello, um, and then I'm, a, I'm just gonna do like the angles once and you can kind of imagine it as I switch on. So I was like, hello, you know, and, they were, and two, of, two of them were like, hey, what's up? And, uh, and then I was like, hey, what are you guys doing tonight? You know, and they're like, uh, we're gonna go down to Sharky's and, you know, play some uh, shoot 'em ups. And uh, I was like, oh, cool, I love shoot 'em ups, you know. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, and so we kind of left and we called each other on the cell phone, but you know, and on the cell phone I was like, hey, you guys still want to do some shoot 'em ups And they're like, yeah, totally, man. Um, we'll be there, just meet us, you know, there. Um, so I got there, it was like 9, 10, around there, like usual time that you show up for something like that. And, uh, and, and they were not there. Uh, and apparently, I guess in LA, there's this weird thing. I guess like if you don't triple or quadruple confirm, um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so like this. Okay, guys, ready? Here we go. All right. So imagine yourself as a small child growing up in Egypt. Uh, you're confounded by political movements in your region. Uh, you're familiar with tactical grenades and procedures and group movements. Um, some of your keen eye aspects of map planning have been kind of like implemented, but kind of removed away from your social group. So your core structures kind of rearranged demographically, but you're comfortable with that and you're aware of super suppressive powers um, in other, other areas of the world. Um, and this is the type of song that you would sing to your dying, dying grandmother. In 1866, people were confused and oftentimes had a difficulty with understanding the universe around them. It was understandable that at that time the Industrial Revolution was just beginning to get on its feet, and certain people who were kind of against what progress would call the terminable age of identification would leave themselves buried in the quicksand and the quagmire of non-technological progress and resistance towards the unification of that which is inevitable. <laughs> this did not stop people from dancing. <laughs> In fact, it only increased the need to dance, and that's why we have so many dance forms today, such as the butterfly monkey, the spooch-filled condom, and of course, my absolute favorite, the frick <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, so I guess the thing is, I, I, uh, I'm from Montana. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm from Montana, uh, Great Falls, Montana. And we used to do a lot of camping. Um, and uh, it's an apostrophe without the G. We <laughs> would go out. We, this is the deal. This is what we'd do. We'd hop into cars, usually three of them, about 10 kids. We'd go to a camping place outside of town. We'd uh, drink four, four and a half to six ounces of Robitussin each. Uh, we build a fire, and uh, generally what happens on Robitussin, as you guys all know, is you drink six ounces or so, you kind of fall asleep, you take a little, little what they call a robo-nap, um, <laughs> about 20 minutes or so, and then you, you get up and your eyes are wired, wide open, and you feel as though you're wearing a giant astronaut suit, and the world around you is made of marshmallows. <laughs> uh, and uh, generally we would just pick a point in the distance and walk in a straight line towards it. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, for one night, we decided to tell ghost stories. Um, and uh, one of the scariest ghost stories that I ever heard, 
or that I ever did dare hear, um, was from my friend Jenny Mason, who was Susie Hughes's cousin. And, uh, <laughs> and if you guys know Susie Hughes, she had beautiful brown black hair that was really soft and uh, gorgeous. And, uh, and I used to you know, watch her you know, from the sidewalk you know, up at her window while she would get you know, re ready. Um, and, uh, yeah, and anyways, uh, but, but her cousin told awesome ghost stories. And, uh, and this is one, and I would like to share it with you. Um, so if you would, uh, ghost story lights, I'm gonna set this up. Can you guys still hear this? Let's <laughs> power on. It was a dark night. <laughs> Zalcron was creating a spell of destruction for the dragon Zelteron hid within the depths of the cave. <laughs> Jimmy came over one night. It was a quiet night filled with fear and hatred. But the marshmallow skin on the small elf decided to leave itself, leaving him bare, musculature and all, to wander the wilderness willy-nilly without any sense of direction that elves normally have. <laughs> well, as luck would have it, a sound emerged from the darkness. said the sound. <laughs> and yet another emerged. <laughs> said the second sound. But still the elf kept walking. Finally, he got to the cave's entrance and he heard this sound. Which translates to, It puts a fucking lotion in the basket. Put lotion in the basket. Put lotion on it, skim. Put fucking lotion in the basket. And he was killed. <laughs> 